this video, we're going to be doing a power jack repair on an Acer Aspire 3680. Now, I'm pretty certain the power jack is bad because we smelled it and it's, we smelled burning coming from the, the power jack. So it's probably pretty fried in there. But what I always like to do anyway is check the power adapter and make sure that's okay. Because if that's not okay, then um, that might be a quick fix right there. Now, I take the black lead on my voltmeter. I put it on the outside of the tip of the power adapter. And see how I stuck a paper clip into the, the uh, tip there? I put the red, the positive, on the tip touch it to the paper clip. Now, I only use the paper clip when I can't actually fit the red lead into the tip of the power adapter. And we're see we're getting 19 volts there. So we know the power adapter is good. Now, you don't need to use the paper clip if the actual tip of the positive fits into the hole. And also remember, you don't want to touch the black and the red together when you're hooking up the power adapter like that because you're going to get a short circuit, it's going to arc. Okay, I threw the foam down there so I don't scratch the, t the surface of the computer, and I flipped the computer over. And we're just going to start taking components out of the computer now because we got to get to the power jack, which is usually attached to the motherboard. When we move this back cover, we see the RAM. We also see the wireless card and the modem. We're pulling the RAM out. And I'm going to take the hard drive out now. There may be a screw or two holding it in, and then it pops right out. Now I'm unhooking the antenna from the wireless card, and I'm going to pull the wireless card out. It's important to unhook these antennas, as you'll see in a minute when we try to get the screen off. And the rest of it we could leave for now. Now I'm going to pull out the one screw here, which is going to free up the CD drive. Okay, now I want to get the keyboard and the screen off. This will give us access to other parts of the computer and allow us to take the top cover off of the bottom cover. There's two screws in the back that are actually holding on what I call the hinge cover plate. Now, the hinge cover plate is the thing that actually covers the screws for the keyboard. So you can't get the keyboard off or the screen off until you take off this hinge cover plate, which is that plate right above the keyboard. I'm going to pry it off. You should be able to just pull it. Now, if you feel like you're forcing it, it's possible there are screws on the underside of the computer holding it in. So just to be safe, I'm going to unscrew every screw on the underside of the computer that may be possibly holding it in. How do I know that those screws might be possibly holding it in? Because they're lined up directly under the hinge cover plate. So just to be safe, I'm going to take them all out. They may not be even be holding it in, but if they are, we got to get them out. Okay, once we're sure we got all the screws out of there, a few more, we're going to flip the computer back over and remove that plate. That'll give us access to the keyboard and allow us to remove the screen. My goal when I do this job is to basically remove that screen as fast as possible. I want to get the screen out of the picture. That's going to be the most unwieldy thing because it's flip, it flips up. It's a delicate thing. You don't want to scratch it. So Now we pull again the hinge cover plate, and it comes off a lot better this time. Now it may or may not, this might be luck, it may or may not have been screwed in, but at least we're not forcing it. Sometimes you have to really jiggle it. It's snapped in there. And once we get that out, now we have access to the keyboard. Now, screws to hold in the keyboard are usually at the top of the keyboard. Take those screws out from the top of the keyboard and then see if the keyboard can flip up. If the keyboard can flip up, then we know if the keyboard's not screwed in from the bottom like that one, and we can just pull it right out. Oops. Now, I'm pulling the wireless antenna through the bottom of the computer, up to the top of the computer, now, because we actually unhooked it from the wireless card, we have access to it now. If they were still attached to the wireless card, we'd have to flip the computer back over, close the case again, and it could get a little tiresome. And then this one over here that I'm working on now is the LCD cable. This is what gives the graphics to the screen. 
and I'm just using a flathead screwdriver just to pull on each end. Be delicate with that. There's probably about 40 wires going into that big white connector. They're very tiny. You don't want to mess them up, so just be careful when you're handling that. And now that the antenna and the LCD cable are unhooked from the motherboard, we can get the screen off. The wireless antenna usually go to the top of the screen, so it's not just the LCD cable that's the only wire to the screen. It's usually those wireless uh, wireless antenna. And there's four screws here on the top holding the screen in. Comes right off. Now I'm just going to look for any screw that appears to be holding the top plate together with the bottom plate. And I want to unattach the top plate from the bottom plate so we can get to the motherboard. So let's look for every screw we can that's actually holding them two together. Unhook any ribbon cables you see there. Like I just unhooked the touchpad ribbon cable. If you don't unhook that and then you start prying the two, the top and bottom plate apart, you could rip that ribbon cable. So just give it another look over. Make sure you got all the screws. Now we're going to flip it around and take out the remaining screws from the bottom. When we do this, and then we try to, you know, rip the top plate apart from the bottom plate. Well, rip isn't a good word, but when we try to take the two pieces apart, the motherboard is going to come with one of the pieces. It's either going to come with the top or the bottom. It doesn't matter which one it is. We'll be able to, to have access to the motherboard after we get it unsandwiched from the top and bottom plate here. I'm, I'm being pretty reckless with the screws here, throwing them all into a one big pile. I've taken apart a few 3680s in my time, so I know where all the screws go. Use the video we talked about earlier. If you're a beginner and you're not sure where all the screws go, use the video that you were shown earlier about um, the best way to get screws out of a laptop. Different people have different systems on doing that. And it makes sure you get all the screws out. And then try to take the two plates apart, or the two covers apart. If it comes apart easy, you know you got all the screws. If there seems like a part that's jammed a little, make sure you get all the screws. And if you're sure you have all the screws, look for maybe a plastic hinge or something that's holding those two plates together. And in this computer... That yellow S video port on the side was actually jutting out and holding the top part of the case to the bottom part of the case, as well as a small little speaker connector right there in the upper right hand corner. So between those two things, they were holding the case on. So we had all the screws out, so that was good. Now, if you see what we're dealing with here, the power jack is attached to a separate circuit board from the motherboard, and this is good for us. So one, let's get the motherboard out, and then we'll hit that, that uh, separate board. Now, I was just pointing to a white arrow on the motherboard. We've talked about this before. The white arrows are usually always on the motherboard to give you an idea of what screws you need to remove. In other words, you don't need to remove every screw on the motherboard to get the motherboard out. Usually only the ones with the white arrows pointing to it. And you'll see that there was only one screw holding this motherboard in. So you want to pull the motherboard out gently without forcing anything. There might be cables still holding it in there. It might be something, screws still, somewhere still holding it in. Make sure you get everything. And as it turns out, actually on this motherboard, there's two screws holding it in, which I'll show once we put it back together. Just remove that from the tape. Now there was two screws holding that little circuit board on. Now that circuit board has the power jack on it. So after removing that, those two screws, I now have access to the circuit board. And if you look close, you'll see that it's burnt right at the positive point there on the circuit board. There's a brown, black outline. Let me freeze frame that for a second. Now that dark little cloud right above my finger with the little piece of silver in the middle, that's important. That's where the positive lead from the power jack attaches to the motherboard. And that's the spot that's loose. And when it gets loose in there, it starts to get real hot and burn up. And that's what's happening on this computer. So if we reattach that positive lead to that part of the motherboard right above my finger, we will be able to restore the connection with a good strong solder connection and that will fix this computer. And the way I like to restore that connection 
is by taking a piece of wire, going from the post, I'll show it to you later, on the other side of this circuit board, the post on the power jack on the other side of the circuit board, and bring it around and connect it to that spot on the motherboard. Now, I do this as opposed to just re-soldering the, the physical post to the motherboard because the physical post is brittle. If I use a wire, I'll have flexibility and the computer will last a lot longer. Now, I'll show you what I mean as I do this. So what we're going to do now is take that circuit board and we're going to create two points on that board where I want to solder a wire to make the connection I was talking about. I'm taking a file here and right above that little black cloud, you can't see it from this distance, but I'll show you when the project's completed. Right above that little black cloud or in a spot close to that little black cloud, somewhere where that positive connection's coming in, I'm going to file away a little spot and expose metal on the motherboard. I got to file away some of that green coating on the, the, uh, or the circuit board. And I'm going to drop some solder right on that spot. I'm going to create a solder point on that spot. So I'm just filing away the green coating and getting that off of um, a little spot on that circuit board right like I showed you before where that positive connection is coming in. And then what I'm going to do is take a wire and go from that point to the physical back of the power jack and go straight to that point. And by doing that, I'm basically going to be bypassing the original configuration of the, the post on the power jack and using my wire as the new connection point. I like using a wire because a wire is flexible. It's not brittle. See, this came apart originally because the post that goes into the circuit board there from the back of the power jack is solid. By replacing it with a wire, you have some flexibility now. So if somebody trips over the power cord, you still have a chance of the power cord still working, the power jack still working. I take a paintbrush there and I... See, I'm filing away to the metal on the circuit board, so I want to brush it all away. I don't want little metal pieces floating around. So use, use a paintbrush or any kind of brush or compressed air and blow the little metal particles away. And this is the wire I'm going to use to make the connection. It's about an inch long, maybe a little bit longer. And I'm going to put a little solder on both ends of this. This is how I prep the wire. Now, I'm not a professional solder, but this is how I do it, and this is what works for me. So for those of you professional solderers watching, you might be cringing at this, but this is... This is how I do it. I put a little bit of solder on each end of the, the wire there, and that's how I prep the wire. And then I'll show you what I do with this wire. Okay, I'm taking the circuit board now. Now, the back post of the power jack, I had filed down so it's going to make a good solder connection. The reason I file is so it makes a good solder connection. And I'm going to put a piece of solder, a little bit of solder, a little glob of solder actually, right on the back post of that power jack. That's where the positive lead is. And then I'm going to take the wire and I'm going to solder to that point where I just put some solder on the power jack there. But first I'm going to take some solder and I'm going to put a little glob of solder on that point that I filed down on the, the bottom part of the circuit board. You can't see because my big fat hand's in the way, but I'll show you how it looks when it's done. There we go. Now you'll see from that picture the two points of contact that we're going to attach the wire. We're basically bypassing the original soldering post of the laptop and that circuit board. We're bypassing it with a wire. Okay, once my hand gets out of the way, I'll show you guys what I'm doing. I soldered one end of the wire to the positive point of that power jack, which is the back post. And I'm going to wrap that wire around the circuit board. And I'm going to solder it to the point that I was filing off earlier. Okay, put a little dab of solder there. Make sure it's in the right spot. And because I soldered both points in advance, all you got to do is heat it up and the solder melts together. Now let me show you exactly what happened here. Oh, first I want to make sure I get the connection just right. You want to grab it with the pliers when you're done. Just make sure it's tight. Make sure those solder connections are on there. And you'll see I soldered from the back post of the power jack right to the point of contact. 
and basically created my own post through the, through the circuit board with the wire. Now we're going to put the laptop back together. It would be smart once we get the laptop partially assembled to test it before we put everything back together just to make sure it works. And also, as you can see there, I'm taking compressed air, blowing uh, all the parts that, since I have them out, it's a good time to clean them now. I use the paintbrush, I use the compressed air. Clean the parts while you have them out. Then reconnect everything. So you don't want little metal pieces floating around. And if you're doing filing and soldering, you might get some little metal flakes. You don't want them sitting across the motherboard. So I always make sure the parts are clean before I put them back together. And especially the the CPU fan, since you have it out, you might as well get it clean. And there I go again with the paintbrush. Just clean off as many parts as you can. See, these, these pieces and crevices, you're not going to be able to get to them once the computer's all back together. So get all the dust out of them while you can. And make sure you get this motherboard positioned back in the computer in the exact same way it came out. They usually will fit in snugly. All the screw holes will line up, and there should be no points that are sticking up or, or flexing outward. Okay, now you got to realize, since I added that additional wire that wasn't originally there in the laptop, you got to create space for that wire. This laptop didn't originally have that wire, so there might be points in where the power jack is that it won't, the wire won't fit snugly or fit properly. So I'm using pliers here, and I'm just cut a little piece of plastic out of where the power jack was just so the way we have our new configuration will fit. And we're going to size it up again and see if it fits snugly this time. Look at the side, make sure the hole of the power jack lines up with the hole on the outside bottom case there. Okay, we're going to cut out, cut out a little bit more plastic here to make room for that wire. Which I consider fine because using this method, method with the wire, the power jack is going to last a lot longer because you got that flexibility. But the only thing you got to uh, worry about is now that you created that wire there and put that wire into the circuit board, which wasn't originally there, is it going to stick out? Is it going to make a connection? Is it going to short out a part of the motherboard? And if it does you have to make sure you secure it with electrical tape and cover up the connections you created and also create more space which is what I did with the pliers there. Okay, now it looks like everything's fitting better. Okay, that's going to have to snap in. We're looking at the audio jacks right at the front there. And they got to snap through the holes, make sure all the holes line up and everything's snug. We're looking good. The sides are lining up. The motherboard's sitting in there properly. So now it's time to put the screws back. Now, in this case, thanks to that white arrow that was guiding us, or actually there was only two screws holding this laptop in. I thought there was one earlier. There's two screws holding it in. The white arrows will point to you what screws you need to take out of the motherboard. And those two screws are the only two screws that are holding the motherboard in. Okay, I want to make sure that power jack is lined up with the hole. It looks like everything's okay, so we're going to start our next phase, which is putting everything back together. Again, take that paintbrush and clean off the dust if you have the opportunity. It's going to be one of the only opportunities you get to clean out the system. And I'm a firm believer that a clean system just runs better.
Okay, we're going to line everything up and just make sure everything goes back together smooth. This is a part I'm very cautious about, putting things back together. There's been a few times where I've put the top case back onto the bottom case but forgot to attach a speaker cable or the ribbon cable for the touchpad or one thing didn't line up properly. Now it's actually interesting here, again, because we added that wire, the top part of the case might not fit over the power jack or the metal on the top part of the case might interfere with the solder connection we created with that wire. So I'm taking a piece of electrical tape or two and I'm covering over the work we did. I'm covering over that wire. I'm basically just covering the whole power jack with the electrical tape. We don't want to create a short circuit. Now we're going to size it up and see if that fits okay now. And that looks okay, so now we're going to snap everything back together. Remember, that wire added some extra parts to the computer. You don't want that wire touching any metal on the computer other than the connections that you created it for. And there's an S-Video port that's uh, got to be snapped back in properly, which is a lesson I learned on the Aspire 3680. You'll start to get familiar with different models and, you know, the quirks of each model. Everything feels smooth, so let's take the screws and start screwing the top of the case back together. Again, I'm just using memory here to, to see which screws go where. Most of the screws in this computer are the same size. There's a couple oddballs, but like I said, I've taken apart a couple of these so I know where the oddballs go. I'm going to speed up this uh, video a little bit just because you saw how he took it apart, putting it back is the same way. So We're going to attach the ribbon cable to the touch pad. That's one of the things you don't want to forget. Put all the cables back in. Okay, we're going to attach little connectors down there that we had to unattach to get the covers apart. Putting the RAM back in now. Putting more screws to hold the case together on. Okay, almost done with the case screws. Now that the case is securely in there, let's put the screen back on. Attach the four screws that hold the screen on. Then we'll reattach the cables. I'm taking a bigger screwdriver here and I'm attaching those monitor screws extra tight. I like to keep tight those points on the monitor where there's a lot of play, a lot of uh, stress. I like to keep those screws tight, otherwise the monitor starts to flop around, which is a big problem with laptop monitors. So I use a little bit bigger screwdriver to get some extra torque when I do that. Now I'm feeding the wireless antenna through to the bottom of the case, just like it was when we took it apart. Sometimes it's a little difficult to get those wires through, but once you get them through in the right spot, you'll know exactly where they go. Okay, now that those wires are exposed, let's install the wireless card and attach the antenna. Make sure it's all nice and neat so when you put this cover on, nothing's pushing it out. Slap the CD drive in there. Put the hard drive in. Attach the screws that keep the hard drive securely in there. Hard drive cover. Two screws holding that in. The RAM cover. Make sure that's all flush. Okay, dust that keyboard off with the paintbrush. Make sure that the ribbon cable from the keyboard goes in exactly the way it was. Attach the two screws at the top of the keyboard. 
push the keyboard into the sides where there was a little pressure. Okay, now the hinge cover. I'm going to slow the video up again. Now that I got those screws back in, and most of the case screws back in, these remaining screws are holding on the hinge cover plate. We're going to test the work we did with a voltmeter. Make sure there's no short circuits. I'm going to set the meter to test for continuity. And I'm going to put the positive point, the positive lead, I'm going to put it right in the power jack, right on the, the power tip, the post in the middle. Or I could use the black. We're just testing continuity, so it doesn't matter what color you use. And we're going to attach the other connector to a point on the laptop that's a ground point. Now, if we touch that center post, the power jack, and a ground point, and we're getting a beep from the voltmeter, we know there's a short circuit. If there's no beep, that means your ground points aren't touching your positive point there, and that's, that's what you want. They need to stay separate. But I like to test that before I plug the power adapter in because I don't want to fry anything. Now you're seeing this screen because unfortunately I ran out of tape at the end of this repair. The last thing we needed to do was put the battery in and we were good to go. Everything tested out okay. Laptop powered on. Everything worked. So that is a done repair. Thanks.